Because Christ is in our future, the Bible tells us that there is now no condemnation for us. Okay, we will talk about when Christ is known in our future. Okay, marami mga tao takot sa future. Now, takot ka lang sa future kung hindi mo alam kung anong mangyari sa future mo. Di ba? One man said, do not be afraid of tomorrow because God is already there. Ang Diyos po, ando na. So, bakit ka matakot kung may Diyos ka sa buhay? And so, today, we will talk about our future with God. Ang ating kinabukasan, tama ba yan? Kinabukasan, future. Or, yung ating puturo. Kasama ang Diyos. Okay? Future. Okay? Futuro. Futuro, future. Our future with God. So, what will be our future with God? With all of these calamities, with all of these viruses uh, surrounding us today, what will be our future? Saan po tayo pupulutin nito? Sa kangkungan ba? Or sa kalangitan? Okay, so yun po yung ating uh, pagbulay-bulayan and it's my prayer that this uh, sermon for this month will be a great hope and encouragement to us. By the way, September 22 will be a holiday and we have in our activity scheduled, uh, we will have a prophetic seminar or conference, okay? Uh, this talks about, we will see the, the whole picture of our future with God. And this morning, we will have the introduction. Okay, so I hope that this uh, September, we can really see our future. We can really see how God is working everything for us. Okay, para hindi tayo matakot. Takot ba, ba kayo sa kinabukasan natin? Okay. Takot ka lang kung madilim yung bukas mo. Pero kung bukas mo maliwanag, ay hindi ka matakot. Bakit? Dahil maliwanag yung bukas mo. And yan po yung pagbulay-bulayan natin ngayong umaga, next Sunday and then uh, third Sunday, and then we'll have our, we will complete our uh, sermon on prophecies uh, on the uh, statutory holiday so we'll talk about that so uh, if you want to know your future have a good picture of what your future is is you know? so join with us on our prophetic conference uh, on September 22 and then we'll have a practical implication of that on the last Sunday of September so, we read here in the verse that we have this morning about the 70 weeks of Daniel. Now, sino po sa inyo nakaintindi ng binasa niyo kanina? Maliban kung ikuha natin, ano, i-detalye natin. Now, this is my task to help you understand what is meant by this 70 weeks ano, na sinasabi ni Daniel itong 70 weeks natin na sinabi ni Daniel dito what is 70 weeks ano ba ito pastor uh, 70 ka linggo ano? 70 ka linggo 70 weeks and para kanino po ito no, well this is actually given to, to the church, or not, not to the church, to the people of Israel because this is in the context of the uh, captivity of Israel, uh, 605 uh, BC, during the time, the first captivity of the people of Israel, and Daniel was one of those captured, and he was brought to Babylon where God has uh, given him a vision, a prophecy, concerning the last things, okay? And I will give a full detail of that during our prophetic seminar on September 22. But what I'm going to do this Sunday is I'll lay to you the foundations of this so we will have a final understanding or a better understanding 
of the 70 weeks of Daniel. So it says here, 70 weeks are decreed about to your people, of course, the people of Israel, and your holy city, Jerusalem, to finish transgression, to put an end to sin, and to atone for iniquity, okay? to bring in everlasting righteousness, to seal both vision and prophet, and to anoint the most holy place, the temple. Know therefore and understand that from the going out of the word to restore and build Jerusalem to the coming of an anointed one, a prince, there shall be seven weeks. Now I will talk about that in detail later on. Then for 62 weeks, so there is uh, what we call here uh, seven weeks. Okay, so seven weeks here. And then you have here six, 62 weeks. So ilang weeks lahat yan? Seven plus uh, 62 equals 69, di ba? So total is 69 weeks. And it shall be built again with squares and moats, but in a troubled time. So the 70 weeks of Daniel here is divided into uh, actually three parts. The first part is a seven week. And actually this is not se uh, weeks of days, but this is weeks of years. So when it says seven weeks or 70 weeks, that would be 70 times seven years. So 70 times seven, ilan po yon? Four? 49, okay, 490. So it should be 490 years. Now it's almost a, a century, you know, 490 years. In the history of Israel, not in the history of the church. So meaning, this 70 weeks is God's program for the people of Israel. Okay? Saan pa tayo dito, Pastor? Na tuloy natin. So, seven weeks, meaning this would be uh, 49 years. And then 62 weeks, this will be what? 62 times 7, 430. May calculator ba kayo dyan? <laughs> 364. 364? Okay. 434. Okay. And sabi niya, and after, no, pagkatapos, di ba, may 70 weeks, okay? First part is 7 times 7, 49 years. The second part is 62 times 7 equals 434, okay? As oh, unanointed shall be cut off and shall have nothing. So anong ibig sabihin yung anointed, you know? And shall be cut off and shall have nothing. Yan po yung pag natin. And the people of Prince who is to come shall destroy the city and the sanctuary. Its end shall come with a flood. And to the end there shall be war. Desolations are decreed. And he shall make strong covenant with many for one week. Okay, so yan, another one week. So, seven week plus 62 equals... 69. So ito po, may meron na tayong 69 weeks dito, ano, di ba? So we have 69 weeks here, kulang ng isa. So ang isang week and dito po. And he shall make a covenant with many for one week. And that completes the what? That completes the 70 weeks of Daniel. Okay? So now you have a general view of what will uh, the division of the 70 weeks of Daniel. The first part is 7, the second part is 69, and there is still, uh, by the way, the 7 and 62 weeks were already fulfilled. Past na po yun. Now we are waiting for the consummation of this one week, which is still future. Ito po ay mangyayari pa in the future. Alam niyo ba yun? Hindi. <laughs> Hindi, no? Ngayon pa lang. Okay? So, He shall make a strong covenant with many for one week and then a half of the week. So, meaning yung one week, ni-divide niya into what? Half. So, anong, anong half ng one week? 
three and one half years. So meaning tatlo at kalahating taon. So meaning tatlo at six months. Okay. And then he shall put an end to sacrifice. Again, from here, it's still future. Future pa dito. Ano? Until here. This is still uh, future. So the first part of the seven weeks, or the one week is three and a half years, he shall put an end to sacrifice and offering. And on the wing of abomination shall, shall come one who will, who makes desolate until the creed it is poured on the desolator. Okay? So, actually, after this sacrifice and end, this will be the another three and a half years, and that will total into what? Seven years. And this is what we are still waiting, the seven years tribulation. Okay? So, this is what God has intended to do. Now, the seven years tribulation actually is not for the, uh, masabi natin na uh, is not for the people of Israel, it's not for the church. It is actually part of God's plan to the people of Israel. So, sa seven years tribulation, wala po tayong kinalaman doon. Ang mga Israelita lang at yung mga tao na sumalikway kay Kristo. Nag-reject, you know? nagsikway. Anong nagsikway si Lucano? Nag-reject? Nagsalikway. Salikway din. O ano? Ano nga eh? <laughs> ha? Nagsuway. O basta nag-reject kay Kristo ha? Ano? Okay. So, the seven years tribulation is still coming and this is actually the world is now or God is now preparing the world for the coming seven years for the coming one week now let me just give to you a uh, a timeline you know? God's timeline in the past present and future Parang makita ninyong kabuuan kung ano po yung nasa timeline ng Diyos. So we have here the eternity past. Ito po yung eternity past natin. Uh, it is, of course, God is, is not bound with time. He is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so this is eternity past. And this would be before creation. Ano? So this would be before creation. Oh, we have their creation. So, in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Okay? So, eternity past, God is God. And uh, beside Him, there is no one else. He is our Creator God. Okay? And after that, He created everything. We have, of course, the fall. Genesis chapter 3, men fall to sin. And then we have the flood. Okay, we have uh, Noah's flood, and also we have uh, uh, flood again. It's not flood, you know. We have this uh, Genesis chapter nine, no? just the, the flood, you know. And then after that, we have Abrahamic uh, time or covenant. It is where God has made covenant with with Abraham, and so that would be 2060 BC. And also we have Moses. That would be. Uh, 1445 BC and we have the Palestinian time that would be 1405 BC and we have the Vedic time of David in uh, 1015 BC and we have the new covenant with God and this would be actually patriarchs and the covenant of God kung paano po ang Diyos ano, nag, uh, make a covenant with his people and this would be the fall of Jerusalem Okay, this would be fall of Jerusalem 53 or 597 BC, the fall of Jerusalem to the Babylonian, and it has actually three depor deportations, 605 BC, 597, and 586 BC. And it was here Daniel was brought to Babylon. 
And after that, Daniel saw this vision, okay, of the prophecy in Daniel chapter 9, verse number 24 to 27. So as we have read, this would be the after ng captivity, you know, ng Israel, 70 years of captivity. And it was there that uh, the declaration of the decree of King Artaxerxes in 445 BC, which is also the start of the 70 weeks of Daniel. So this would be in this part, would be the, the, the start of the, the 70 weeks of Daniel, 445 BC, until the time that the Messiah be cut off. Okay, the time where the Messiah be cut off, this would be here. Okay, yan. So, it is where the, uh, the, the history of Daniel chapter 9, verse 24, 27, took place until the time where the Lord Jesus Christ, of course, died at the cross of Calvary. He died A.D. 30 or A.D. 33, and it was then there, the end of the 62 weeks. Okay, so the 62 weeks that Daniel talked about, that God has given to Daniel, ended here in Calvary, at the cross of Calvary, uh, where the Lord Jesus Christ died. Okay, San po pastor ngayon yung last week ni Daniel? Now, after nang namatay si Kristo, okay, kundi ito, namatay si Kristo dito, no? nila siyang ni Papo siya sa cross. Now, after that, may tinatawag po tayo na church age. Okay? Church age. Yan po yung kung saan tayo ngayon. This would be the church. Now, the time that we are living today is a time where the time of the Gentiles or the time of the church. Tayo po, andito tayo ngayon. We are here sa church age. At Kung tingnan po natin, if we look on Daniel chapter 9, verse 24 and 27, until the time that the Messiah will come again, wala pong nakarecord doon regarding the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now, most of what will happen in the church of the Lord Jesus Christ are recorded in the New Testament, in the book of Matthew, before the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. So, the church age of the Lord Jesus Christ, or the, the time after the Lord Jesus Christ was resurrected from the dead, is the beginning of the church. So this would be actually Acts, you know, Acts chapter 2. This would be Acts chapter 2 that God has recorded in history, in the book of Acts. And after this, actually this is uh, a known time. Wala po, hindi natin alam kung kailan po matapos yung church age. No one knows when the church age will end. Sabi ni Cristo, not even the Son of Man, only the Father knows, because the end of the church age is the rapture of the church. Okay, the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now again, I will talk more in details of this in our seminar on September 22. But let me just give you a general view, uh, general uh, yeah, view of the 70 weeks of Daniel or the timeline of God from past, present, and future. And so the church age will end in the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ also is divided into two phases. The first phase is the rapture of the church. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4 and verse number 16 to 18. Okay? We will be caught up together with the Lord Jesus Christ in the air. Okay? When the trumpet sound, yun po yung sabi ng kanta natin kanina. Behold, He comes riding in... Uh, ayan. Riding in the clouds, you know, at the trumpet sound, Jesus will come again. Now, paano natin malaman na darating na si Kristo? Or darat, darating talaga si Kristo? Now, we took it <clears throat> based on the faithfulness of God's Word. 
history would say and would tell us that Jesus Christ came in the first time during Christmas, di ba? <clears throat> That's why we have Christmas. And he died again. And our history, Christian history, filled with this kind of events. And of course, the Word of God tells us so. And because he came for the first time, we are sure that he will come for the second time. The first time of his coming is not intended for the change of the world. It is intended for the change of the heart. And that's why you remember when the Lord Jesus Christ came. Uh, Matthew chapter 21, when he has his triumphal entry in Jerusalem. Si Cristo pumunta sa templo. Bakit siya hindi pumunta doon sa government ng, ng Rome, hindi sa mga leaders ng Rome? Kasi kung gusto niya i-change yung sanlibutan, bakit no, hindi niya binago at hindi niya tinanggal yung Rome sa Jerusalem, sa Israel at that time? Bakit templo yung linisan niya? Hindi niya nilinisan yung government ng Israel. Well, for the main purpose is that Jesus' first coming is not intended to change the government or the social status or any of the form of government in the world. His first coming is only intended for the cleansing of man's sin and man's heart. In the second coming, when he comes again, he will be the one, that would be the time that Jesus Christ will be cleaning the world. Because, bakit? Kasi patayin ng Diyos lahat ng mga kurap. Patayin ng Kristo lahat ng mga hindi tumanggap sa Kanya at reject sa Kanya. Revelation chapter 19, we'll talk more about that in detail. But He will be coming and He will be making war with the Antichrist in the valley of Jehoshaphat the valley of Megiddo and he will there will be a great war because people nations from uh, north south east west they will be coming to Israel because they will be conquering Israel but Jesus will come to the rescue of the people of Israel and he will slaughter all of these kings nations together with antichrist in the valley of Jehoshaphat Okay? Meaning, nasa atin pa rin yung huling halakhak. Ano? Ang victory ay nasa atin pa ngayon. Maraming kurap. Hayaan mo lang sila. Pakurapin mo lang sila. Okay? Because time will come that God will make them to suffer unless they will come to know the Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and Savior. So, the first coming of Christ is intended for the change of hearts, to change the hearts of men. The second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ is intended to cl cleanse every people, every nation, every government, any status, psychological, sociological, political, God will change it. Why? Because Jesus will be the one to reign, to lead the world for a thousand years. And that will be a peaceful reign of the Lord Jesus Christ. So we'll talk about that also later on. So, Jesus Christ, He died here in AD 33 or AD 30. That is where the Messiah was cut off according to uh, Daniel chapter 9 verse number 24, 25, 26. And then we have the church age where we are living today. And the end of the, the church age is the rapture of the church, 1 Corinthians chapter 4, and the beginning of the last week, the 70th week of Daniel. Okay? So, this would be the beginning. So, the rapture of the church, kasi sabi nga natin in, in Daniel chapter 9, 24 to 27, there is no mention of the, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, God will take up, no, take away his church before he pour out the one, before he fulfilled the one week of the 70th week of Daniel that is left in the history. So meaning, if that's the case, pagmamaya rapture, Start na kaagad yung 70th week of Daniel. Start na kaagad yung 7 years 
tribulation. The, so the 70th week of Daniel is actually the seven years tribulation in the book of Revelation. Okay? So hope you understand that. You can picture it out in your mga mind. How the timeline of God is now being fulfilled in our time. Okay? So, first phase of the coming of Christ, rapture, we will meet the Lord Jesus Christ on the air. And then here in the world will be seven years tribulation. And up there is the rapture, of course, the Bema judgment, and then the rewarding. And then after that, the bodily, after the end of the seven years tribulation, Jesus Christ will come for the second time. Okay, the second phase of your second coming. And sabi ng Revelation chapter 1 verse 7, Every eyes will see Him. First phase of the second coming, hindi po siya makita ng mga unbelievers. Bakit? Ikaw lang at ako yung makakita sa pagtunog ng trompeta. Walang makarinig maliban sa mga anak ng Diyos. And that's why ma ma mabigla yung mga tao. Uy, nasaan na pumunta si Sister Ruth? Okay, si Brother Ryan, saan na sila? Brother George, si Sir Gigi, ano bakit iniwan nilang pusa dito? Okay, bakit iniwanan ni Brother George yung pintuan ng sasakyan na naka-open? Ano? Brother Hope, nasaan na sila? Hanapin kayo ng amo ninyo. Okay. Akala nila nag a wall kayo. Okay. Oh, bakit iniwan mo yung alaga mo na doon nag naglalaro sa plaza? Baka iakusaran ka ng employer mo, kaya lang wala na siyang mahagilap. Bakit? Ikaw po ay nasa kay Kristo na. Wow, ano? Di ba? Hindi ka na makauwi ng Pilipinas niyan. <laughs> Iwanan mo na yung mga anak mo. Kung sila po ay walang Kristo sa buhay, sila po ay maiiwan. Saan sila, Pastor? Eh, they will be going through the seven years tribulation. And what is included in the seven years tribulation? Pag-aralan natin yan sa ating seminar. Okay? In detail. But the thing is, this is the seven years tribulation, the 70th week of Daniel. 69 years has been fulfilled, or have been fulfilled. One week is still more to go. And this is actually, sabi ng Biblia, this is the worst in the history of the world. 69 weeks, worse than sa history ng Israel. Because the temple was destroyed, they were captured, okay? They were made to suffer from the hands of the Roman government, from the hands of Babylonians, as part, of course, of their disobedient, uh, disobedience to the Word of God. And this is part of God's prophecy that they will suffer. But they will have the final uh, pain during this seven years tribulation. Another term is the day of jo Jacob's trouble. This is a troubled, troublous time in the people of Israel. Tayo, sana tayo. Hindi na tayo dadaan dito. Sabi na iba, dadaan pa tayo. Eh, ayaw mo sila kung gusto nang dumaan, pero tayo ayaw natin. Okay? Bakit po? May maraming mga views actually when it comes to this. For them, sabi ng iba, eh, ngayon millennial na or walang millennial. Ngayon seven years tribulation na. Pero maraming mga events, uh, Revelation chapter 6 to 9, 19, na hindi pa natin actually naranasan. Bakit? Katotohanan dahil wala pa tayo sa seven years tribulation. What we are now here, we have now here, and we are now living, are the days where Jesus talks about in Matthew chapter 24, that the time before He will come again. May mga signs before the Lord Jesus Christ will come again. Wars, rumors of wars, we have that. Calamities, we have that. Pagbaha, hurricanes, uh, U.S., okay. New York, we have pandemic. All of this, we have. And I think marami pa ang susunod. Why? Because this is part of the preparation of the coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And Jesus said, no, sabi ni Pablo, when you hear people say, peace, peace, do not believe because there is no peace. Okay? 
Peace-peace lang, meron sila. No? Ang peace. Ang isda, peace. You know? Ang mukha, peace din. <laughs> Subdivision, may peace din. Huwag ko lang kung anong peace meron sila. Pero alam natin, may meron tayong peace. And that is, Jesus Christ is our peace. So, we are living before the tribulation. Not we are in the tribulation now. We are living before the tribulation. We call this the premillennialism. Meaning, be pre, meaning before, millennial, before the coming or the 1,000 years reign of the Lord Jesus Christ. And that is pre-mill. Before the tribulation, the church will be taken away. Paano natin nasabi yan, Pastor? Bigyan ko later on ng verses to conclude with our introduction of this. So, after that, the church will be raptured, seven years tribulation, Jesus Christ will come again, and sabi ng Revelation chapter 19, we will, together with the Lord Jesus Christ, come back to the world, follow the Lord Jesus Christ in the valley of Jehoshaphat, and Jesus Christ will fight with those nations, kings, captains, antichrist, and Jesus Christ, ano, wala po siyang sandata. Wala po siyang high-tech na panglaban, ano, sa, of course, during the time siguro, grabe na high-tech yung mga, mga armas ng mga nasyon. But all of what they have built in, high technologies, arms, and all of those, they cannot even kill or bruise the Lord Jesus Christ. Ano lang yung armas ni Kristo? Sabi ng Revelation chapter 19, And sharp-edged sword came out from his mouth. Nahihiwain yung mga tanki de guerra nila, yung kanilang mga eroplano, at kung ano pang mga armaments that they have in war. You remember Pilate? Sabi ni Pilate, Are you the king? Sabi ni Cristo, if I am a king of this world, uh, sabi niya, my kingdom is not of this world. Because if my kingdom is of this world, my army will come and will fight for me. Because his kingdom has not yet come. But when the time, and that's why si Cristo namatay parang helpless, no? kagaya lang sabi ni Isaiah, kagaya lang siya ng karnero na nilagay sa slaughterhouse na walang kaimik-imik. Why? Dahil nga sa iyo at sa atin, para magkaroon tayo ng kapatawaran sa ating mga kasalanan. Para po siya magiging final sacrifice at the cross of Calvary. But the time when he resurrected from the dead, he said he will come again. And when he comes again, he will not be as a sheep anymore. He will not be a savior of the world anymore. But he will be the conquering king. He will be the conquering king. Conquering king, parang uh, wag lang i-tuloy-tuloy, no? Conquering king. Wag lang i-conquering king. Ano, parang hindi may magandang pakinggan. Okay? And when the Lord Jesus Christ will come again here on the last time, the end of the seven years tribulation, sana yung aking, oh, yun. Yun, high-tech na rin tayo, eh, para makita natin. Yun. So this would be the last uh, uh, half of the seven years tribulation, Jesus Christ will come, Revelation chapter 19, and He will slaughter those people who rejected Him. Alam niyo po ba, ano po yung kainatnan ng mga corrupt leaders, those who rejected the Lord? Alam niyo po ba na ipakain sila ng Diyos sa mga ibon? Okay? They will be fed by the Lord God to the birds. Basahin niyo yun sa Revelation chapter 19. Wala na tayong time na magbasa. But yun lang po yung kainat na nila ngayon. nag enjoy sila yung mga corrupt, yung mga mabagsik, yung mga leaders na mga bu bully. Ano? Parang wala tayong magawa sa kanila. Kinukuha nila kung anong atin kanila at kung anong kanila hindi atin. Ano? Time will come. Si Kristo yung katapat nila. Espada ni Kristo galing sa kanyang bunganga yung kanilang haharapin. At they will die and they will be fed to the birds. Okay? And after that, Jesus comes. This would be the 
the second phase of his second coming, and he will establish his kingdom for a thousand years. Tawag naman natin dito, millennium, Revelation chapter 20. So in millennium, kasama natin si Kristo, each of us will reign together with the Lord Jesus Christ. Okay? Kaya lang, yung katawan natin, hindi ng katawan mo ngayon. Okay? Incorruptible body. Hindi na susceptible ng virus at kung anuman. Okay? Wala na. Glorified body. Of course, together with those people na tumanggap dito sa, sa Revelation chapter 27, hindi sila nagpatatak ng tato ni Satanas, they will be entering into the, uh, the millennium. Kaya sabihin nyo sa mga anak ninyo, kung ngayon hindi pa sila tumanggap kay Kristo, kung ayaw nila, sabihin nyo lang sa kanya, sa seven years ka na lang magtanggap. Okay? Kung gusto mong ayaw sumama sa akin, doon ka na lang sa seven years tribulation tumanggap. Pero huwag ko lang kung tatanggap pa sila kasi this will be the time that is very hard to accept the Lord without because the Holy Spirit also is not on the seven years tribulation. Ngayon medyo easy pa yung magpatanggap. No? Although marami pa rin mga tao na hindi tumatanggap pag nagpresent tayo ng gospel. Although mayroon tayong Holy Spirit. If people today are hard to accept the Lord Jesus Christ, even though the Holy Spirit is us and joining with us in, in witnessing, how much more in the seven years tribulation where the Holy Spirit is not working anymore? Okay? Merong witnesses pa rin dito. 144,000 Jews. Hindi po Gentile, ha? Or hindi din sila yung Jehovah's Witnesses. They are the Jews that came from the 12 tribes of Israel. They will be witnessing here in the tribulation. And so we will be living, reigning the Lord Jesus Christ for a thousand years here after the Lord Jesus Christ comes together with us. And at the end of the thousand years, Jesus Christ will have the final ba battle in the Gog and Magog, and Satan will be defeated here, and Satan will be cast into the lake of fire together with those who rejected the Lord. Okay? And after that, we will have the new heaven and new earth. This would be the eternity future natin. Okay? This would be eternity future natin. There I saw heaven, new heaven, new earth. Makita nyo? Maliit, no? Hindi ko rin makita. But anyway, ito po yung kabuuan ng timeline ng Diyos. Ito po, from here to here, fulfilled na po yun. Ang ito na lang, rapture na hinihintay natin, papunta dito, future pa yan. Okay? So dito, andito tayo ngayon. You are here. O, lagay natin para hindi ka maligaw. You are here. Okay? Gusto mo bang pumasok sa tribulation? Or gusto mo bang ma-rapture ni Kristo? Okay? Bakit pastor? Ano mangyari dyan? Pag-aralan natin yan next time. But here, because Christ is in our future, the Bible tells us that there is now no condemnation for us. Okay? Sabi ni Pablo, Romans chapter 8, verse 1, there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ. So meaning, kung meron kang Kristo sa buhay, sa timeline na binasa at tinignan natin kanina, hindi ka nadadaan doon sa seven years tribulation, you will not be condemned, you will not be thrown into the lake of fire because you will be with Christ. And that's the word in. Ano? No condemnation for those who are sa loob ni Kristo in Christ. Meaning lahat tayo, mga tao na tumanggap kay Kristo, Nasa kay Kristo ka, nasa loob ka ni Kristo. Hindi ka sa labas. You are not out, but you are in Christ. And because you are in Christ, there is no condemnation. Condemnation meaning you will be eternally separated from God. You will be cast into the lake of fire. Revelation chapter 20 verse 15. Okay? Hindi ka na po i-condemn ng Diyos. When you stand before God, you will just receive your reward. That will be on the Bema judgment, not on the great white throne judgment. Okay? And you will not be condemned. Sabi ng Panginoon, not guilty. 
no condemnation. You live with Christ. Number two, not only that you will not be condemned anymore because you are in Christ, because Christ is in your life, is in your future, you are not also appointed to the 70th week of Daniel, the wrath of God. Sabi ni Pablo, 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse number 9 to 10, For God has not appointed or destined us for His wrath. Yung wrath dito, refers to the 70th week of Daniel, the seven years tribulation. The wrath of God, the, the, the time where God will pour out His judgment to the world. Okay? And because we have the Lord Jesus Christ, hindi tayo kasali dito. Ang pagpour ng buhos ng galit ng Diyos para lang sa mga Israelita na nag-reject kay Kristo, at para sa mga Gentiles na nag-reject kay Kristo. Pero sa mga tumanggap kay Kristo, Jew or Gentile, they are part of the body, the church of the Lord Jesus Christ. And the Bible tells us they are not destined. They are not appointed to the coming wrath of God. Okay? But to obtain salvation, we have this salvation through Jesus Christ. Bakit? Tayo po ay kunin ng Panginoon. Wow. What a time, what a day it will be when we will be meeting the Lord. At the trumpet, mamayang gabi, baka makarinig na tayo ng tunog ng trompeta ng Diyos. That will be the time that we will be meeting the Lord in the air. Pastor, paano yung pera ko sa bangko? Hayaan mo na yun. Okay? Paano yung aking mga ari-arian? Iwanan mo na yung kasatanas. Okay? Gusto mo bang bumalik? Baka magiging Mrs. Lot ka. Okay? It's good na mayroon tayong mga pera sa bangko for preparation. But lahat po yan maiwan natin. When Jesus Christ will come again. Why? Because yung ari-arian natin cannot, uh, cannot compare, cannot be compared to the glory the blessing that we have when we will be meeting the Lord Jesus Christ on the air. Pastor, paano yung asawa ko? Walang kriso, yaan mo na siya. No? Iniwan ka nga niya ngayon. Ikaw naman namang iwan sa kanya. O, <laughs> pwede ba yun? Ano? Okay. Pero siran mo siya ng salita ng Panginoon. Baka tumanggap. Ay, hindi kasama kayo sa langit dalawa. Pero hindi na kayo mag-asawa. Ano? Okay? So, because... God has not, uh, not appointed us to wrath. God has not uh, given us condemnation because Christ is in our life. Christ is known, Chris, Christ, ano? is known in our future. Therefore, our future with God is safe and secure. Ganun po yung binigay ng Diyos sa atin. Ngayon, medyo parang wala tayong security, para wala tayong kalaban-laban ano, sa virus, wala tayong kalaban-laban sa kung ano. Pero alam nyo ba, truth above truths is that your future is safe and secure in Jesus Christ. Because you will not pass through tribulation, there will be no condemnation to you. You will be enjoying the presence of your God forever in heaven, in new heaven, and new earth, in millennium, and to eternity. And because of that, alam niyo po ba na kayo lang po, tayo lang po ang may forever? Kasi we will be forever with God. Yung iba, may forever din. They will be forever with Satan. Na naglalangoy-langoy sa apoy ng lake of fire. And because of that, we are forever grateful to the Lord. To see this vast plan of God, and this will be a hope for you and for me. Ano man po yung ating mga kalagayan ngayon, look at your future. God has prepared a bright future for you according to His Word. Kunting kembot na lang po sa tribulation na tayo. Rapture na po. So wag na kayong parang mawalan ng kwan pag-asa. No? Parang ayaw ko nang mabuhay. Hindi, mabuhay ka pa rin. No? Kasi kay Kristo, masagana ang buhay natin. Let's pray. Hello there. If this sermon has uh, blessed your life today, 
feel free to share this to others and we also would like to encourage you to not only to share this but also to subscribe to our YouTube channel. We aim that uh, we can share the gospel to others uh, through this ministry and by your subscription also. Who knows, maybe God will bless our ministry here in YouTube so we can also help other pastors and churches who also are suffering because of this pandemic. So just uh, subscribe and also click the notification bell so that whenever we upload videos, you will be notified. Okay, so thank you so much for your help. And uh, we pray that uh, through this ministry, you and I, and here at the IBCF Ministries, we can reach others for the Lord Jesus Christ, and we can introduce them to the kingdom of God. Thank you so much. May the Lord God bless you and your family.